Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, Recipe for Deceit. This is the story of an unusual recipe and an unusual man. Mess Steward, Sergeant Melvin Dilbert of the United States Army. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Young men, if you're interested in continuing your education, here's important news for you. You can be trained in one of the world's finest technical schools for a career that will be of great benefit to you for the rest of your life. Right now, the United States Army has an urgent need for qualified technicians to operate and maintain the many kinds of equipment developed by science for our modern armed forces. Today, men are being trained in such varied fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, photography, and many others. As Army specialists, these men are embarking on careers that offer wonderful opportunities for advancement high living standards, valuable experience, and liberal retirement benefits. A career in today's United States Army offers excellent opportunities for young men with intelligence and ambition. For full information, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Recipe for Deceit. The trouble with most real-life heroes is that somehow they take you by surprise. In the first place, they don't look the way they're supposed to. After all, tradition says a hero is usually tall and handsome. All in all, the answer to a maiden's prayer. Well, what can we say about Sergeant Melvin Dilbert? Sergeant Dilbert is an authentic hero, even though Dilbert himself would admit he isn't quite cut out for the part. To begin with, Sergeant Dilbert is round and chubby. And every day it seems to him that his fart is becoming just a little bit higher. But the sergeant is a philosopher. After all, he came into the world without much hair, so it's quite in order that he stay that way. The sergeant has 14 years in service. He spent World War II in Africa and Europe and put in 15 months in Korea. Yet he'll be the first to tell you he never fired a shot at any of our country's enemies. Did Napoleon say an army moves on its stomach? Sergeant Dilbert agrees most heartily. After all, men must eat and someone must feed them. Dilbert says that the U.S. Army contains the finest group of chow hounds in the world. Bless them. So, Sergeant Dilbert, mess steward to a headquarters company stationed near Vienna, treats his men right because his business is food. And you better not leave anything on the plate. Everybody got enough to eat? Yes, Sarge, what's this? What do you think of this? Looks to me like stew. The biggest chef in Vienna gave me this recipe, and you call it stew, huh? Six hours I spent soaking the vegetables in garlic sauce, and you call it stew? Okay, hey, okay. hey, don't blow your lid, Sarge. It's not bad. You know something? Pretty good. Stew yet. Why do I bother with you guys? I could feed you burled turnips. I could toss warm over food at you. Stew. Well, one thing's for sure, I don't have to listen to you guys crap, and I can go home and work in one of the biggest restaurants in New York with people who appreciate good yeah, food. Yeah. Stew. Uh, pass the ketchup, Maxwell. Ketchup? Ketchup? You're gonna put ketchup in my beef fork and yawn? You're gonna put ketchup on that? Why not? I put ketchup on everything. Oh, uh, why do I bother? Why do I waste my time? Hey, Sarge, at any second? Yeah, yeah, there's seconds on the ketchup. 
Put it in your ice cream. Well, that's Melvin Dilbert, Sergeant, Mess Steward Extraordinary. He's going to be the hero of our story. And when the boys of his headquarters company found out about his action, just as you will, a more surprised group of men couldn't be found on the continent of Europe. Typical reaction. Sergeant Dilbert? Jumpy Dilbert! <laughs> I got a month's pay here. Says they made a mistake. Dilbert? What did he do? Hit the guy with a frying pan? That figures. I bet the guy went and put ketchup on Dilbert's chicken fricassee. But there were some who read about it and weren't entirely surprised. For instance, a bus driver in Chicago who'd been in a rifle company with the 45th Division in Italy. Hey, Henrietta. Hmm? Remember this Sergeant Dilbert I was telling you about? The mess sergeant in my old outfit? Look. I don't want to hear another word about what a rotten cook I am compared to him. Oh, honey. Some wives have to put up with a lot of stuff about their mother-in-law's cooking. Oh, Me, honey. I have to compete with an army mess sergeant. Yeah, but... What about him? His name's in the paper. What does he do? Win a pie bacon contest? No, honey. Well, what did he do? Find some fellow's wife in the kitchen trying to steal some of his recipes. Yeah, huh? cut it out, will ya? He needed plenty of guts for what he did. Yeah, and I ain't surprised. You know, nothing could ever stop that guy. I remember with the time in Salerno. It was yeah. raining for a week. And there I was, standing knee-deep in water in my foxhole. Do I get a medal for listening to these war stories? All day, me and my buddy were eating cold K rations. Boy, <sighs> what we wouldn't have given for some hot chow. Well, there was a barrage going on, see? 88s and mortars flying all over the place. Yeah. But all of a sudden, somebody falls into the hole with us. Whom do you think it was? Santa Claus? No, it was Dilbert. He was bringing stew and hot coffee up to the line. None of this hanging back warm and dry at the command post for him. No, sorry. He was bringing hot chow right up to the line. And let me tell you something. He didn't have to do it. All in all, Sergeant Melvin Dilbert might be considered a happy man. He was doing the work that he liked and he was doing it well. If some of the guys in the outfit put ketchup on Dilbert's master creation, well, most geniuses fail to receive recognition in their lifetimes. After all, even Will Shakespeare knew what it was to sit in the audience and hear people laugh at the wrong places in Hamlet. And let's face it, Sergeant Dilbert was a good cook because first and foremost, he liked to eat. And so, you might say, that was the underlying reason he became a hero. What does a postman do on his day off? Simple, he goes for a walk. And Sergeant Dilbert, why, he'd go to a restaurant. On this particular day, Melvin Dilbert was strolling along a narrow street in a suburb of Vienna, somewhat off the beaten track, when he passed by a tiny cafe. He stood in the doorway, and a delightful odor filled his nostrils. Dilbert knew at once that something good was cooking inside, being cooked by someone who knew his trade. Enough for Sergeant Dilbert. Sergeant order. Uh, yeah, uh, what's very good today? The chef is preparing his special paprika chicken. Paprika? Oh, hey, that's for me, that's for me. The old nose tells me that boy is really on the ball. Uh, uh, bring him a bottle of wine and put it on my bill. Uh, tell him there's a guy out here who really appreciates good cook. Yes, sir. Step. That is it. What is the recognition signal for the courier that is due here this month? Is it so difficult for you to remember the most simple instructions? I asked for information, not a lecture. So? He is to enter the cafe, huh? ask for the special dish of the day. Huh? He is to praise the chef, send him some sort of a gratuity, a tip, or perhaps a cigar, or a bottle of wine. Ah, that is what I thought. So, the courier is outside. Hey, look, look through the partition. Mm -hmm. I see no one but some um, fat American sergeant. A man dressed in the uniform of a United States sergeant. Remember last month the courier wore the clothes of a British captain? Ah, yeah, yeah. Somehow he does not look like a courier. Oh, no matter. 
He has given the first recognition signal to me. Now he must give the second to you. If he does, he is our man. Now, give me an order of the chicken paprika. You may be right. Actually, he does not look like a soldier. That blue insignia. Now, that is the badge awarded to American combat infantrymen. Looks out of place on him. We must advise him that he is overdoing his disguise. <laughs> Oh, man, that's what I call good eating. Did you enjoy the chicken, sir? Oh, and how, and how. You know, I'd like to make this up for the guys some Sunday for dinner. Uh, not that they deserve it, you know. Oh, uh, hey, listen, Froling. Hmm? You suppose maybe I can swindle the recipe out of the chef? Oh, Sepp very jealously guards the recipe. He will tell no one. He will not even allow anyone in the kitchen while he prepares the chicken. Oh, well, look, uh, can he come out for a minute and say hello? A guy can cook like that's a guy I have to meet. Tell him I'm a cook, too. And, uh, well, I, I was going to call myself a chef, but after tasting that chicken, I guess I'm just a cook. A ham and egg frying cook. And I will see if, if Seth is busy, sir. <laughs> Go outside, Sepp. He said the correct statement. He wants the recipe. Yeah, reach behind the stove and get the envelope. Um, what would you say is his um, nationality? No, it, it is difficult to place. Obviously, he has studied the American speech and idiom and speaks it to perfection. I would say perhaps a bit too much perfection. It is somewhat overdone. It is not our problem to advise the couriers on their disguises. We are here to relay information and remain in the background. Your man is outside. Get the task over with. Uh, Herr Sergeant? Oh, Herr Chef. Buddy, buddy, I never tasted better chicken. Uh, thank you, Herr Sergeant. <laughs> Dankeschön. <clears throat> uh, Lotte tells me you asked for the... Um, Recipe? Oh, yeah, well, uh, I, I'd sure like to have it, but if you say no, I'll understand. No hard feelings. Uh, but you, uh, you did ask. Oh, sure, I had to ask. Uh, it's yours. I have it written here in this uh, envelope. I could not very well tell it to you. Others might overhear. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, believe me, Chef, the secret is safe as far as I'm concerned. I, uh, you know, I could tell you use dill and, and, and pepper and, and some paprika naturally. Yeah, and you have to saute the chicken first, huh? But, but you got it all written down, haven't you? The instructions are explicit. Oh, fine, fine. Yeah, I appreciate this, you know. It, it's sure nice of you to give it to me. Now, you cannot go wrong. Each step is carefully noted. Oh, don't you worry. I know this business. It'll come out right. Don't you worry. Uh oh Hey, no, it's 3.30. I gotta get supper going back at the company. And, and thanks a million for the recipe, Chef. Yeah, use it well. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll let you know how I made out, too, huh? So long, Chef. I'll put a sign. He does in. An extremely experienced, capable operator. Yeah. I told you he plays the American soldier perfectly. As soon as he received his information, he did not delay. He left at once. And uh, he made everything seem so, so, so natural. <laughs> Suppose a member of counterintelligence were in the room. Could he possibly suspect that the men were anything but a sergeant in the American army? <laughs> Child started, Sarge. What'll it be, steak or chicken? You didn't say. Miller, tonight we're gonna feed him chicken. Southern pride, huh? Nope, nope. We're gonna go native. I got a new recipe. Hey, Sarge, huh? Something good, huh? Miller, Miller, this is gonna beat everything we ever said. I, I just tried it out this afternoon. I got the recipe right here. Well, how do you make it? Uh, 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 it's gonna be my little secret. Go on, light the stoves, huh? I know I'm gonna need some flour, some tomatoes, carrots, uh -huh. uh, Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Give me a couple of seconds to study this whole recipe, and I'll give you the whole list, huh? Yeah. yeah. 
Tomatoes. Uh, how many pounds, Sarge? We got some pressure. Or... Hey, you want to open some cans? The carrots we're loaded with. Now, wait a minute. Let me read this, huh? Uh, it says here, uh, report at 9.30 p.m. to 178 Koenig Strasse. Report at 9.30 p.m. to 178 Koenig Strasse, where you will receive the blueprints. Hey, 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 Sarge. What'd you say? Hey, what? Was oh, that guy kidding? Well, I troop this position. What are you talking about, Sarge? Wait a minute. Hey, this is no gag. I don't know why or how they... Hey, hey, Sarge. Don't you feel well? Miller. Miller, I got to see the old man right now. Yeah, but what about the recipe? Hey, hey Sarge, we got to get chow started. Now, you take care of supper tonight, huh, Miller? But, Sarge, what'll I feed him? Anything, anything at all. But make it good. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production Recipe for Deceit. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. It shall not happen here. That's the unspoken prayer of every man in the United States Army. That's the unspoken reason for our growing military might. But the time has come to speak. The time has come to tell of that small phrase, those five words, it shall not happen here. Let us speak only to those young men of America who have not taken pause to think. Let's shout it in a voice that will reach into every city and village across the length and breadth of this great land. Young men, you are needed. You are needed to help preserve the peace. You are needed to serve in your United States Army to ensure for your loved ones that it shall not happen here. You are urged to visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station at your earliest opportunity and ask about the technical careers of the United States Army. The need is urgent. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. Now we present the second act of Recipe for Deceit. That's the whole story, sir. I just went into the joint to have some lunch, you see, and I asked the chef for the recipe. Oh, man, that was really chicken. Mm. And this is the recipe, I take it? Yes, sir. This is why I called you, Captain Hanson. Well, we've blundered into something, all right. Question is now, procedure. Well, it's in the hands of your section, Captain. These papers mention an address for couriers to proceed there and pick up the actual information. Or we can do one of two things. We can raid the place and make some arrests which isn't too good an idea because we can be spotted as we approach. Paper can be destroyed. People we want might get away. And there's another way. Well, what's that? Sergeant Dilbert, how much service do you have? Fourteen years, sir. Mostly in what assignment? Uh, the kitchen, sir. Second cook, first cook, mess such. Well, uh, that's out then. You don't have the training. Uh, training? Training for what, sir? Well, had an experienced man fallen into a setup like this, we might be in a position to make some real progress. But, uh, I'm afraid Captain, that... uh, excuse me, sir, but I've been thinking about this. Why not? Well, I couldn't order you on this type of assignment, Sergeant. It's dangerous. You've never had the proper training for this kind of mission. Well, maybe that's what's needed, sir. I mean, uh, well, well, sir, look at the way it worked out. Now, just naturally, they figured me for the guy. Now, why? Because I'm the least likely fellow you'd think was an agent. Yes, I, uh, I know all about it, but I don't think you could maintain the deception long enough. In my opinion, you'd get yourself into trouble. We wouldn't get what we want. Oh. Well, uh, sir, uh, you just said you, uh, you wouldn't order me to follow through on this. Huh? Can I ask a question? What is it? Well, would you order me uh, not to do it? What time is it, Major? Mm, 6.30. Three hours until 9.30. Dilbert, fortunately, I don't have to make this decision. Actually, the captain didn't have to make the decision. Neither did the major. There was a one-hour session, six officers and Sergeant Dilbert, and the air was filled with pros and cons, yeses, noes. It could work, it won't work. Why lose a good man who hasn't a chance? Maybe he does have a chance. 
but basically, the decision belonged to Sergeant Dilbert. Sergeant Dilbert? Yes, Colonel Haynes. Good luck. I think I can bring it off, sir. Follow the instructions in the envelope to the letter. We're going to cover you as closely as we can. Now, one thing, don't try to become a hero. At the first sign of trouble, don't try to bluff it out. Yell, make noise. We'll bail you out. That understood? Yes, sir. You better get ready, Dilbert. It's 7.30. Yes, sir. All right, gentlemen. First, let me tell you that we have the real courier. Picked him up half an hour ago. So that removes one of the major concerns. Now, suppose we consider this map. 178 Koenigstrasse. Here it is. Wide streets in all directions. That's not too good. Well, I'm afraid to surround the area. These people are smart. They'll smell a rat right off. Now, how can we get close to the address to cover, Dilbert? I know a way for four men to stop right outside the house, sir. Let's hear it. On such short notice, it's the best we can do. Of course, one moment, sir, before I say that. We might arrange with the city powerhouse to give us an electric power shut off in that area. That would give a repair crew an excuse to go there. I don't like that. Notice there's a hospital across the street. Power failure would affect them, too. Well, then, this is my original suggestion, sir. I'll need a jeep and three of the best men we have. <laughs> Dilbert. Yes, Major. I understand it's been decided to let you go through with it. Yes, sir. You've got a lot of nerve, Dilbert. I just wanted to stop by and wish you the best of luck. Thank you, sir. I want to give you this. It's a 20 caliber, but it's deadly. You can hide it under your shirt. It won't show. Well, uh, sir, thanks, but... Uh, well, I, I've been getting by in the Army for 14 years, sir, without having to fire anything except the stove. I think I can get by tonight. I hate to think of you being unarmed, Dilbert. Oh, I won't be unarmed, sir. I got me a first-class weapon right here. Hmm? Where? Right here, right here, sir. I don't see anything. Yeah, this. Why, that's just a pack of cigarettes. Oh, but, sir, there's more than cigarettes in this. And it's a first-class weapon. Down. You've come here for what purpose? I picked up an envelope with instructions. Where? Zep's Cafe. I will take the envelope. Here you are. Good. Zep, Lotta. This is the man to whom you gave the instructions? Yeah. This is the one. What is that? Look out the window. It, it, it is a jeep with four American soldiers. All right, what's the matter with this crate? I don't know, sir. Well, take a look, will you? I got a date with this babe at 10 o'clock. He just calls himself a driver. I thought you'd just have this wagon over to maintenance. All right, you guys just sit back and let me look, huh? Oh. Three weeks, yes. I've been after this girl for a date now. A knucklehead like you has to come Oh, on. now, why don't everybody relax and take it easy? Evidently, they're having trouble with their engine. Give him his instructions and let us go from here. These are troop dispositions, French, English, and American. Mm -hmm. A tabulation of heavy weapons and tanks. You will report to our sector and see Commissar Fedorov. You know him? Uh, uh Fedorov? Of course you know him. He's chief of your section. Oh, yeah. Yes, sure. Fedorov, sure. Hey. Oh, oh, what is the matter? Cover this one with your pistol, sir. Hey, what's the idea? The idea, my friend, is there is no Commissar Fedorov. Thought I'd see if the soldiers are still outside in the car. Yeah. One of them is looking at the motor. You're probably here to cover this one. But but he, he gave the recognition signal. The party will deal with you, Sepp. And Lotta. But we thought... Be quiet. First, we must get out of this. Oh, it won't be difficult. We have the tunnel in the basement. The soldiers will come in here finally, search the house and discover the tunnel. But by then we can be far away. Well, let's get what we can from this one. Hey, who are you? 
Who are you? We have no time now. Let us take him with us. My friend, you will talk to us. Depend on it. When we finish up with you, you will wish you were never born. Yes, babe. No tricks. I had better go first with the flashlight. You, you. Why? What are you reaching for? Keep your hands where I can see them. Doctor, see if he has a weapon. Stand still. Oh, oh just a package of cigarettes. Yeah, a package of cigarettes. Uh, look, fellas, I can smoke, can I? Give him back his cigarettes. Thanks. Hey, uh, anybody want one? No. Come on. Oh, come on, have one. Have a smoke. Slip. <coughs> What's the matter? <coughs> he threw something at me. <coughs> it's burning my eyes. <coughs> <coughs> hey, guys, come around and Lock up. Pick up the gun. Drop it, sister. Drop it. Where are you going, Sep, buddy? Why? What if you guys wasn't outside? Blake, let's take these guys back to headquarters. Bet we caught some mighty big fish. Well, Sergeant, you uh, certainly know how to use your hands. How'd you get the gun away from him? Oh, Captain, every guy to his own trade, I always say. Now, uh... Sir, in my kitchen, what's the most important item? How would I know? Pepper, Captain. Pepper. You see, I had the cigarette pack half full. That's good for cooking anything. I guess I cooked their goose tonight, huh? <laughs> Young man, why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? In selecting your life's work, it's important to consider all of the requirements of a satisfactory career. Opportunities for advancement, dignity and importance of your work, permanence of your job, living standards, retirement benefits, and value of experience. When you choose a career in the United States Army, you'll find it's more than just another means of earning a living. Your Army career will be a way of life, rich in fine association, the satisfaction that stems from public service, and the opportunity for achievement and adventure in the far corners of the world. So, why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station right away and ask about the career opportunities in the United States Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.